All right, so we got here a little late tonight, but we're really excited to show you guys this super cool spot. It is the Grand Canyon of the East Coast. This might be the prettiest campsite, not just in North Carolina, but the prettiest free campsite in all of the East Coast. Oh. This over here is the Linville Gorge down inside here. It is the deepest gorge on the East Coast. It's like 2,000 feet deep, I think. We'll put the number up here of what it actually is. But this is a really cool free camp spot that we're here with our truck camper. And tomorrow we're going to try to hike down in there and hopefully catch a fish. There are trout down there, way in the bottom. It's a, The trails we're looking at are like a mile long, but they're 2,000 feet in elevation gain in a mile, which is insane. That has to be some of the steepest hiking in the United States. or It doesn't get much, much more steep than that and you need a rope. I mean, you're kind of like this at this point. <laughs> But tonight what we're excited for is this area is called Brown Mountain and it is known for the Brown Mountain Lights, which is this unexplained phenomena that even colleges have looked into of there will be light orbs that float around over here. And there's no roads over here. There's no cars. There's no way to be back here other than on foot. And for over 150 years, they have no explanation as to what these floating orbs are. Nope. It's been captured on camera. It's been seen by countless people. We have personal friends that have seen it. And yeah. so we're hoping to catch a glimpse of these orbs back, back here tonight. So we're going to make our little ramen noodle dinner and sit here and enjoy this fire. And then hopefully see some magical orbs. If not, we can't wait to wake up in the morning and show you guys more about this place. The best free camp spot on the entire East Coast. We're gonna just fall asleep to the little whooper wheels, the little birds. You can hear them in the background, they're saying whooper wheel, whooper wheel. Mmm. All right, we're gonna enjoy our three bean salad tuna ramen and listen to the whippoorwills and then hopefully see some brown mountain lights. It's a little bit windy. I'm hiding here behind the truck to block some of the wind uh, so the audio is okay. But we've just been seeing little glimmers over here. If you look at Elizabeth's head and then right behind it, um, there's like something glowing on top of the mountain. I, I took a photo of it because that's the only thing we have, you know, where it can we can do a little longer exposure it can, it can show you what's in the dark we don't have a camera that will pick anything up that subtle no. uh, video camera anyway so we took some stills and uh i think it's probably just like something in maybe grandfather mountain or something like that where there's a maybe a beacon on top of or something but um so for us it's an unexplained phenomenon but but i don't think we've seen the brown mountain lines but maybe not yet still holding out After a night of unsuccessful brown mountain light hunting, which I am legitimately bummed out. I've wanted to see it my whole life. I don't think we ever saw any of the lights. I do think what we were looking at was some sort of radio tower or something. I've texted some friends who are from this area to see if that's what it was, but uh, no report back yet. But a new day has arisen. <laughs> and I am staring at what is going to destroy my lower body today. <laughs> quads, hamstrings, glutes, they will all be a ruin. So we'll show you real quick what we're looking at here or maybe show you with the drone. But uh, that, that gorge back there is between 1,500 and 2,800 foot deep and most of the trails we're looking at are only about a mile long. I just wanna go down there and fish it. I brought our collapsible fishing poles as always. There are trout at the bottom of that gorge mm -hmm. and there are also smallmouth bass down there. So I'm very excited to go down there and at least put a spinner in the water and see what happens, but I think it is going to destroy our bodies. So we have our delicious <laughs> Nescafe latte from Dollar General, and uh, we're currently fueling up for that. Also, this road is really rough. Uh, it's kind of, it's it's a maintained gravel road, but quasi-maintained. Yeah. So we're at the bottom of this gorge, and this gorge follows this ridge line here and goes up and around. <clears throat> and we've got about 10 miles to go up this road, and it gets pretty rough. If you've noticed in our YouTube videos, we never have mid-roll ads and we never have unskippable ads. Mm -mm. For two years, three years, we never ran ads at all and that was out of choice. We were monetized, but it was out of choice. We didn't want people to click off and the ad money for us is not enough to make it worth it. Our channel is so small. Yeah. 
Um, but if you'll notice, a lot of channels throw in mid-roll ads or multiple mid-roll ads. We've never ever done that and we always choose skippable ads because we find them personally infuriating. And that leads me into our next point, our new Candy Adventures merch. If you see our shirts here, this amazing 90s style design, which is uh, Elizabeth design designed these t-shirts and it's from our uh, Manaday bicycle review from Van Powers mm -hmm. and we built a trailer to go surf fishing on the beach and we used this design, this quasi jazz design yeah. I used the word quasi twice today. <laughs> I got a big vocabulary. But go check this out on candyadventures.com, and we won't ever run mineral ads on you. No. Um, the sizing is sort of weird. Uh, this is a s extra small, and that's a large. Um, it doesn't seem that the shirt itself gets smaller. It's like the sleeves and the length on the waist changes. So just know it's going to be a little loose. Uh, no matter how small it goes. Yeah, if you're a female, get the smallest one you can. The difference between small and large is very... I'm, very I'm, I'm 5'10", a buck 80, and I, I wear a large, and I could even probably go a medium. So Yeah, he could fit in my extra small. It, I, the sizing is just weird, but it's the only um, like dry fit, fishing style shirt option that they have at the moment. So if they ever upgrade to a better version, we'll definitely let you know. All right, well, I think we're going to uh, maybe try to eat a little something, get this pop-up camper packed down, and uh, begin our arduous climb up this kind of rough gravel road, see how rough it gets, and see if we can fall down into this 2,000-foot deep <laughs> gorge. Well, don't say fall in. There have people been rescued out of this thing. Yeah, several times They've a year, I think, people lifted. get rescued. <laughs> yes. So this, this gorge is no joke. It is probably the hardest hiking routes probably in the East Coast. Mm -hmm. for a minute because this is the reason why people come here. So this is the gorge and there's only a few of these spots that are right on the edge with an unobstructed view. But this is beautiful. You have an epic backdrop and a campfire right here. Um, this was full when we got here yesterday, but this is just an example of the views that you can get um, up at the top on this edge of the canyon. Just for this. All right, back in the truck. We've successfully destroyed our drone this morning. <laughs> um, we were trying to dr drone a little bit to show you how rough the road was. And for the thousandth time in a row here on Candy Adventures, we've destroyed our drone, but we still have cameras and we have made it to the hiking portion. And we've came to our first little overlook here and we can see how much of a butt kicker this is gonna be. I don't know if you can tell. But we have to go all the way down to the very bottom. The trail we're doing, I think is a 1700 foot elevation gain change in, yeah. in like a mile. Yep. So this is gonna be a butt kicker, um, but we're here. We have our collapsible fishing pole and my cute little a um, mauve or maroon backpack. So one of the reasons why they call this the Grand Canyon of the East Coast is because it is a giant canyon and a giant gorge with a river at the bottom. But what makes it different is that the East Coast is so dense in forest that it doesn't look like the Grand Canyon. It looks like a rolling hill side of trees. <laughs> the East Coast is, as people, we've been doing videos for five years now, you don't realize how hard the beauty of the East Coast is to show off until you try to film it. Because yeah. every view that you can kind of see through the trees with your eyes, you can't show that on camera. And you go out west and it's just so easy to film and drone. and Because uh, it's just wide open stretches yeah. of, of no trees whatsoever. So you can see mountains that are, you know, four hours in the distance or something. But here it's usually a wall of trees. So if this little outcropping wasn't here, you couldn't see all this. <laughs> all right, let's, uh, let's keep our quads and 
hamstrings and Achilles tendons in shape and continue down this descent into madness and hopefully catch a fish. And Mona's coming with us too, so it's a little bit of exercise for her. Mona's found our first little cave of the hike. So there's supposed to be a few of these along this specific trail, but because it is a rock canyon, there's a lot of rock outcroppings and little caves. It's a nice and cool under there. So some of these trails in here start getting kind of overgrown once you get farther closer to the river. And this trail doesn't get used very much, as you can see, covered in leaf litter. Um, you know, not just exposed dirt that's been packed down every day. So feels like we're exploring kind of. Very steep, very slippery with all the leaves. And I think we're going the right direction. Now, these trails a lot of them that go actually to the river aren't marked. A lot of the ones along the along the uh, the ridge line are marked, and there's one that makes a big loop around the river at the bottom of the, the gorge that's marked. But a lot of the connector trails to get down in between not the marked. steep ridge lines are not. Yeah, so <laughs> I think we're going in the right direction. It looks like a trail, just not used heavily, so it, it should be something. All right, Elizabeth's only 20 feet behind me, but you can see she's almost invisible, even with that blaze orange. That's how thick the vegetation is here. We finally made it down to the bottom. Our knees and hips have paid for it. But look at this awesome spot that we Whoa. found down here on the bottom of this. It's so pretty. This looks like out west in the Rockies. Whoa. All right, so we're already seeing fish. There's pretty water here. The farther down you go, it has smallmouth. This runs into a lake. And the farther up you go, it's more and more exclusively trout. So I'm very excited to whip a spinner into this beautiful looking water and see if we can at least catch something. If not, this was gorgeous, regardless. I don't know if we'll do a catch and cook just because I, I don't know if I'm gonna carry a, a fish up. I don't have any ice to carry a fish up. I might if it's a good enough fish, so we'll see. It'll be really warm by the time we get back. Yeah, it'll definitely have to be something that's cooked today, so. Yeah. All right, let's get our collapsible pole out and see what we can do down here. Here we got our collapsible eagle claw, which we probably caught more fish than any pole ever, is this cheap little eagle claw combo from Walmart. It's so handy to take everywhere with you. So I'm just gonna use this big old rooster tail. This is a quarter ounce. So one of the bigger, one of the bigger rooster tails. I'm just gonna throw that and see what happens. Oh, that feels good. Oh, that's nice. Oh boy. No luck in that beautiful honey hole. It's absolutely stunning looking, and it does not look like it's on the East Coast. But we're gonna have to get our feet wet and continue working our way upstream. You can't just walk beside this river here because it's in a gorge. So it's either vertical granite and stone walls covered in rhododendron, impenetrable, or you can walk in the water. So. Yeah. Gonna just have to do it. I am carrying all the money, all the phones, and all the gear, so I can't dunkaroo. So Chris is going first as he just has the fishing pole, trying to gauge how deep it is. But it's thigh height. This is 
pretty cool. These are crawdads. Most of this, trying to get to some fishing pools, is obstacles, climbing over giant rocks and helping Mona over them. She doesn't have hands to be able to climb up some of this stuff. So I'm having to boost her up or help her down a lot of these obstacles, which she likes it. She usually looks to you for help. feet of elevation change blown out knees and there it is right there for that winner <laughs> in this epic gorge all right this little guy's gonna go back though get a little small it's i love these little brim they're so pretty little, i mean the orange and blue the little warm mouths or whatever they are yeah there's like warm mouth pumpkin seed very um, pretty long ear there's a bunch trout i'm a little bummed out on the the lack of trout that we've seen down here which is none just catching a little brim here pretty little guy going back in look oh. at the size of the lure for that fish it's the, almost the same size as the fish typical candy adventure style lots and lots of walking and preparation and very little fish being caught the demoralizing thing today or i don't know if it's demoralizing or not which way you look at it we hooked one good fish and it immediately got off, of course, after those two little sunfish. But I haven't even been spooking trout. I, I hate walking mm -hmm. through trout water. And even if you're not catching them, at least you're spooking them. You know they're there. This kind of bums me out that we haven't been spooking many fish. If I spooked one trout, this one, is, one small trout, and that was it. This is like seemingly the troutiest trout water I've ever seen. Giant holes and rock formations and lots of flow and deep pools and... It looks amazing. It's stunningly beautiful. And if I asked Chat GPT, tell me what the most trouty looking <laughs> river on planet Earth would be, it'd look like the one we're sitting in. Yeah. Just haven't seen them, not having any luck. But before we crush this hike back up this <laughs> terrible mountain, this vertical ascent, uh, I'm going to go ahead and crush some of this Ooh. 13 grams of protein per can, some van camps. Beanie weenies, which is what we call the dog. <laughs> it's a. Uh, for real, for real, people's energy power. It is. Things. <laughs> 230 calories of goodness. is really doing all of this in reverse after you have not caught fish yeah it's like the climb of shame
this woman named Tammy. But hoes gonna be hoes, so I couldn't blame Tammy. If you're sitting at home thinking, wow, I wish my dog was as brave as that, don't be fooled. That is not bravery. That is insecurity and fear of being left behind that is driving that one to climb around all this stuff. Because as soon as you get to an obstacle that she thinks she can't conquer, she starts to whine because she doesn't want to be left behind and she really needs help to keep up with you. So it's not bravery like a Malinois where they bred the fear out of them and it'll conquer any obstacle. It's a, it's a very insecure dog. <laughs> But very trusting. What are you doing? I don't know what this is, but my whole life I know what it looks like. And it smells like chewing gum. And if you chew on the stick, it tastes like chewing gum. It's like minty? Yeah. Like toothpaste or something. I don't know what this is. I'm sure it's very common and most people are like, Chris, you idiot. This is what this is. I don't know what it is, but it tastes like toothpaste. <laughs> It's almost like spearmint or something like that. I know we have wild mint here. I don't remember what it's called though. No, you don't wanna, but you gotta. Come on. You can do it. There you go. There you go. Come on. Good girl. We made it back to where the trail led out at the river, so we're gonna have to work our way back up, and this is what we've been dreading all day is the climb out. But we've been casting along as we've come back, and we've gotten a couple hits, but they've all gotten off. And I think they're all kind of small, so it seems like this isn't the most um, productive fishing site, but arguably the prettiest. Did I speak too soon? Too soon. Did I speak too soon? Well, oh! Oh, attacked him. Does one small mouth attack the other one? Oh man! Yeah, small mouth. Woo! I spoke too soon. He's small. It's not a keeper, but no, but it counts. It's a small mouth. That's what I wanted to catch. Was either. Oh wow! It has the red eyes. I either wanted to catch a trout or a small mouth. That's so cool. So it's, it's the rock bass that have red eyes, right? They have red eyes too. Oh. They're fatter and not long. That's so pretty. Wow. Little small mouth. Way down here in the gorge. Going back. Literally the last cast before we hike back up. There he goes. That's crazy. Another one is exact same size attacked him. Really? Hit him from the side right here. Or tried to hit the lure. No keepers, nothing to eat. But I got something planned for dinner anyway, so. I didn't, I wasn't planning on hiking a, a fish out this far because I don't want to carry the ice down here and it's a pretty long hike for unrefrigerated fish, but. But just wanted to catch something. If we would have caught a really nice fish, I would hike it out and eat it immediately, but. So that cliff up there, that's kind of where we're headed. So everything out of this, river is is absolutely vertical so i've been dreading this but at least we caught a couple fish no cool no good keepers but now the punishment begins the thing i've been dreading for a while now if you watched our dennis martin video where we did a lot of elevation change in a short amount of time and uh had a uh green. expert come with us ex green beret expert come around with us and uh embarrass us in physicality <laughs> today it's only going to be ourselves embarrassing ourselves so this is gonna be even more vertical than that hike in a shorter amount of time. So let's do this. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like the dog knows where to go, but she has four legs <laughs> and claws. So this is a little bit easier for her. And Chris is just going to get a straight butt shot the whole time. <laughs> yeah, the people walking in front of you are at your face level when you're right behind them. That's how yeah. steep it is. Yeah. My butt is at Chris's face. A lot of this stuff's really thick because it's rhododendron thicket. 
Every time I hike out west, I always, I always admire it because you don't have to cut through this kind of stuff. It's really thick stuff. And then there's no breeze in here either. No, so once that sun starts going down, you get bugs. We're coming. I know, we're slow. You wait. Okay. Oi. And she already gone. Very steep. Very oh. tiresome. It can never get picked up in a camera. Cameras never show it, but right now, the angle of the ground is like this. This is not an exaggeration. But the nice thing, we didn't see another person. No. It's hard to find someone on the East Coast where you can go fish a pretty river and not see another person. Not one. Nobody. Nobody on the trail. Nobody in the water. It's very rare. Nothing, so. But to get to places like that, it, it requires this. Yeah, you have so. to put in the effort to get away from people, I think. For a large, I mean, a large majority of places. Okay, let's go. All right, we're about <laughs> 1 25th of the way. <laughs> This river is like the the hot versus crazy scale. Scale, you know, and you're like you can uh, you know you can put up with more crazy for a little more hot. Yeah. This, this this hike in here to, to fish this river is is right at the cusp of I don't care how gorgeous it is, it's not worth that amount of crazy. Above the crazy line, we have the danger zone. This is your redheads, your strippers, anyone named Tiffany. This is where this is where your car gets keyed. You get a bunny in the pot. Uh, your tires get slashed, and you wind up in jail. So this is right <laughs> at the, in the in the apex of what what I would do for the for the crazy pretty yeah graph. We made it. So that's a false to the wall nut crusher, but. We made it, now let's see if we can find somewhere to stay. I don't know where we're gonna to stay tonight. This area is very popular and it only has very few campsites. So last night when we got here, the reason why the video started so late is because we drove up and down this road looking for a spot and there was nothing. So we'll see if we can find a spot. So roll the dice. Is this a custom paint job on your e-tool? Yeah, I think it's a new coat of paint every few trips. <laughs> So, as you can see, we lucked into one of these awesome view spots, which we found out there's only a few, but it is impossible to get this camper level. So we're trying our best here. Get on in there. All right, so if you saw our last few videos, our diesel heater went out. We had a new, put a new diesel spark plug in it. Now it's May here in North Carolina, so it's not super cold. But what this thing is awesome for is it blows super hot air right at the ground. And these boots I have are soaking wet after we just been fishing all day. So this makes an awesome, another great reason Shoe to have Shoe dryer. A, exactly. <laughs> this thing will get them dried up in about an hour. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these babies ready for tomorrow. This vent, I mean, blows straight down here, so it's perfect. As long as you take the insoles out, it will dry these no problem. See how close we are to the edge here, which if you don't like heights like myself, we are right on the precipice, there's Mona down there, of this cliff out here. So that is the other side of Linville Gorge over there. And you can see how vertical it is in the river that we're fishing ends down there way down in the bottom about 2,000 feet down and we are parked as you can see right on the very edge of this this may be an even more beautiful campsite than we had yesterday yes here you can really see how steep the gorge is we are this is the precipice of the gorge right here and it is almost a vertical drop after this and you can see on the other side um, 
the other side of the gorge and how steep it is. So it's almost like a mirror image on this side. Mm -hmm. And you can see just how vertical it is to get down to that river. So we found an amazing spot, which after all the exercise today, and we didn't eat much today except that little can of beanie weenies you saw, we're gonna have a old Southern classic, uh, one of my specialties, <laughs> it's called a KFC bowl. Oh um, yeah. So we're gonna take some chicken nuggets that we have here. That we put in the cooler, so they should be just refrigerated, not frozen. We're gonna load these bad boys up on a skewer <laughs> over the fire. And then we're gonna whip some instant mashed potatoes up and we have some corn and some cheese and some gravy. And we are gonna make some delicious KFC style loaded bowls um, because we did not successfully get a fish today that was <laughs> worth keeping. So if you want like a romantic candy adventures history story, our third date that we ever went on or our third weekend ever hanging out, we hiked out in the Blue Ridge Mountains and roasted frozen chicken tenders over a fire while we looked at the stars and drank muscadine wine. There you go. <laughs> Take notes. That's, that's how you treat a lady. Take notes. <laughs> we were literally just laying on a sleeping pad, staring up at the stars and there's no lights around there. So it was beautiful. We got our cream corn. I mean, come on, come on. <laughs> Stop it with the hot dogs every camping trip. You could be living this life right here. Talk about cheap too. Dang, and chicken nugs are already cooked, so it's just crisping them up. Now we got a little gravy on here. Woo! A little piece de resistance. Come on, get out of here. Say less. Say less. <laughs> is that delicious? It really is. <laughs> I lie to you a lot and tell you that things are delicious on this channel when they're yeah. not because, you know, I'll lie to you if it makes the video better. That really is delicious. Crispy, delicious, salty, gravy-y. <laughs> that is delicious after doing that hike. Also, what I'm still excited about for tonight. Brown Mountain Light. Is this is an awesome place to see the brown mountain lights. We still didn't see them. I don't think we saw them last night. We could see them tonight. If not, it's an amazing place to fall asleep. And we'll see you guys next time unless we see some brown mountain lights. So that's it. <laughs>